What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our fifth example video following our course on abstract algebra. Now, today's example video is going to be examples all based around the symmetric group. So with the introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the first example. So for this first example, we want to write the following as the product of disjoint cycles and find the order. So we're given the four cycle one, two, five, three, and that will be times the three cycle one, five, four. So let me go ahead and write that out for us to begin. So we have one, two, five, three, and then one, five, four. Great. So as usual, we are going to start with one. So when we feed one through this first loop here, we will get a five. And then when we feed a five through here, we will get a three. So that'll give us one, three. And then when we feed three through here, it'll be fixed at three. And then when we feed three through this four cycle, it'll go back to one. So we will close our parentheses here. Next, we are going to start with the next smallest number, which is two. And once again, when we feed two through the three cycle, it will be fixed. And we feed two through the four cycle, it will go to five. And then starting with five, when we feed five through the three cycle, it will go to four and four will be fixed by that four cycle. So we'll have two, five and four there. Now we've exhausted all of our numbers, so we should be done, but we can go ahead and check. So when we feed our four through this three cycle, it will give us a one. And when we feed one through our four cycle, it will give us a two, which lets us close the parentheses here. Great. So that gives us the following product of disjoint cycles. We have the two cycle one, three, and the three cycle two, five, and four. Next, we want to find the order. And the order is going to be the LCM of two and three, because they are two disjoint cycles. And the LCM of two and three is going to be equal to six. So that will be the order of this product here. So let's go ahead and get into our next example. So for this example, we want to write the following as the product of disjoint cycles, just like we did before, and find the order. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and write out what we've got before we begin. So we have one, two, five, three, eight, and nine. And I'm going to calculate what this squared is and what two, three, seven inverse are before we start, and then we can take the product of the two. So let's start on the left here. So we wanna find out what one, two, five, three, eight, nine squared is. And a quick shorthand for calculating a squared cycle here is just to move by two each time. So let's go ahead and write what that is equal to. So starting at one, like we usually do, well, if we move two, instead of going to two, we will go to five. So that will give us a five here. Then if we move two from five, we will get an eight. And then once we move two from eight, we will go back to one, so we will close that there. Then starting with the next smallest number, we'll start with two, well that will go to three, and three will go to nine, and that will return us back to two. So that is what we get when we square one, two, five, three, eight, nine. Next, let's do two, three, seven inverse. A nice little trick to calculate the inverse is just to move backwards. So let's start with two like we usually would, and going backwards from two will give us a seven, and then going back from seven will give us a three, and three will return us right back to two. So combining these two, we will get the product of one, five, eight, two, three, nine, and two, seven, three. Great. So let's go ahead and start with one as we usually do. But I wanna note that this first three cycle here is disjoint from the other two. So that means we can just write this out as one, five, eight at the start here. And then we can start from two. Well, two gets mapped to seven and then seven is fixed. So we have two, seven here. And then we have that seven is mapped to three and three is mapped to nine. So we have two, seven, nine there. So we have two, seven, nine there, but we, when we run nine through this, we will get that it goes back to two, so we can close the parentheses there. So the only thing left is three, but we can see when we run three through here, we'll get three is mapped to two and two is mapped to three, so three is to itself, like that. So this will equal the product one, five, eight, and two, seven, nine, and the order of those two, three cycles will be equal to three. So I'll just go ahead and write order is three right here. And that will finish this problem off. So let's go ahead and get to our next one. So for this one, we want to find how many elements of order five are in S8. Well, the only way to get an element of S8 that is of order five is a five cycle. And how many ways are there to choose a five cycle from S8? Well, there are eight choose five different ways. And eight choose five is equal to 56. So that gives us 56 elements of order five in S8. Great, so let's go ahead and get into the next one. 
So for this one, we want to find out how many elements of order two are there in S6. And this won't be as easy as there are a bunch of ways to come up with elements of order two by using different combinations of two cycles. So let's first calculate how many elements there are of just one two cycle. So go ahead and write that out, one two cycle here. So the elements of one two cycle are simply going to be six choose two, which is just equal to 15. So there are 15 ways to write a element of order two from S6 using only one two cycle. So the second possibility is using two two cycles. So when we have two two cycles, we have the following chances. So we have six choose two ways to pick the first two cycle. And then we have four choose two ways to pick the second choose two cycle. But we actually have to divide by one over two here because of the fact that counting them in this way will double count cycles like one, two and two, one, which are equal to each other, which we want to exclude. So we'll divide by a two there. So once we do that, we will get uh, six choose two times four choose two, which will be equal to 45. And then lastly, we want to calculate the amount of order two elements that we get from S6 that are composed of three two cycles. So when we have three two cycles, we will have the following chances. So we'll have six choose two for the first one, then we'll have four choose two, and then lastly, we'll have two choose two. But because of the commutation relationship, like I said up here earlier, we will need to divide out the double counted cases, which in this case will be one over six, giving us a total of 15 possibilities for this. So when we add all these up, we'll have 15 plus 45 plus 15, which is equal to 75 different order two elements in the set S6. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our next problem. So for this problem, we want to prove that the four cycle two, five, three, seven cannot be written as the product of three cycles. And we also want to write it as the product of two cycles. Well, to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and write it as the product of two cycles, which is rather easy. So let me go ahead and write that out. We have two, five, and three, seven. Now the way to split up a cycle like this into two cycles as each is that each of these two cycles will start with the first element, which in this case is the number two. And then we'll just go from the back to the front. So we'll have two, seven, then two, three, and then lastly, two, five. And that will be this four cycle written as the product of two cycles. Now, in order to prove that it cannot be written as the product of three cycles, we're going to have to use a lemma, which I will prove for you now. So the lemma is the following. So for this lemma, we want to show that if we have the product of n two cycles, so we have a1, b1, a2, b2, all the way up to a n, b n, and we have the product of those two cycles is equal to the identity, then we have that n is even. And we're gonna do this by induction. So I'll go ahead and write that out, that this proof will be induction on n. So because we're doing a proof by induction, we're gonna start with our base case. Well, let's see, if we have that n is equal to one, then we just have a single two cycle. So I'll go ahead and write that. We have a single two cycle for n equals one. If n is equal to two, then we have that a, b times c, d is equal to the identity. But that simply means that we have that a, b is equal to c, d. Great. So now I want to note the following commutation rules amongst two cycles so that we can continue with the proof. So we have the following commutation rules for two cycles, like I said. So we have a, b and a, b is equal to the identity. We have b, c and a, b is equal to AC times BC. Then we have CD times AB is equal to AB times CD. And then for our last one, we have that AC times AB is equal to AB times BC. Great. And the takeaway from all of this is that you can always move the rightmost occurrence of A to the left. So let me go ahead and write that out. And so we're gonna use this fact that we can always move our rightmost occurrence of A to the left for the rest of the proof. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna start by setting our A equal to A sub N in the following manner. So we'll have 
a sub one, b sub one, all the way up to a sub n, b sub n is changed in the following way. We have a sub one, b sub one, all the way up to, and then we'll have a and b sub n. Great, and so now we want to move the rightmost occurrence of a to the left. So let me go ahead and write that. And we'll be doing this until we achieve one of the following two cases. So let me go ahead and write those out for you now. So for case one, we'll have that the two cycle with A is next to its inverse. And then for case number two, we will have that the appearance of A is in the leftmost two cycle. And so now let's examine both of those cases here. So for case one, we will have cancellation for the two cycles with A. So the two cycles with A will cancel. So let me go ahead and illustrate that for you now. So we'll have that the identity is equal to A1, B1, all the way up to AN, BN. But then that will be equal to A1, B1, all the way up to AM sub minus one, BM minus one. And that will be where our A is located. So then we'll have AB and AB, which will cancel to the identity because it's next to its own inverse and then we'll have the remaining two cycles here. So we'll have a m plus two, b m plus two, all the way up to our a n b n. And these trailing two cycles here can change with commutation rules. So I'll just go ahead and write that out. Can change with the commutation rules. Great, so now let's look at our case two. So for case two, we will have that the identity is equal to a one, b one, all the way up to a n, b n. But by our commutation rules, that will be equal to a b times a two prime, b two prime, all the way up to a n prime, b n prime. And what I want you to note is that there will be no a in any of these here. So that, that means that there are no a's there. So since there's no a's, that means that the identity times a is equal to b. But that means that our identity one isn't the identity, which is a contradiction. So if, if one is not the identity, then we have reached a contradiction which means we only have to worry about the one case here. So now that we have this lemma proved, let's go ahead and apply it to this problem. So we're gonna do this by way of contradiction. So let me go ahead and erase what I've written out here for our proof, and then we can go ahead and apply it to this problem. So we're gonna do this proof by way of contradiction. So let me go ahead and write that out. So we're doing a proof by way of contradiction. And so by way of contradiction, we are going to suppose that we have that our four cycle here 2, 5, 3, 7 can be written as the product of three cycles. So we'll express that in the following way. We'll have A1, B1, C1, all the way up to AN, BN, and CN. Great, but that means that we have the following relationship. We have that our product of two cycles that we derived earlier, 2, 7, 2, 3, and 2, 5 is equal to the following. We'll have A1, C1, a1, B1, A2, C2, A2, B2, all the way up to A, N, C, N, and B, N, C, N. Great, but what does that mean? That means that our identity is equal to 2, 5, 2, 3, 2, 7, A1, A1, B1, all the way up to A, N, C, N, and B, N, C, N. But that is a problem. And why is it a problem? That's a problem because what we've written out here is the product of 2, N plus 3, 2 cycles. And why is that a problem? Well, that's a problem because we have an odd number of 2 cycles equal to the identity, which gives us a contradiction. So 2, N plus 3 is odd, and that is our contradiction. So what did we contradict? We contradicted that we could represent our four cycle two, five, three, seven as the product of three cycles. Great, so let's go ahead and get to the next one. 
So for this one, we want to show what all the possible orders of elements of S12 are. So right away, we can take care of the first 12 orders, orders one through 12, because we can simply make a one cycle through 12 cycles for those. So we have one through 12. Great. So from here, we want to find numbers between one and 12 that are relatively prime that add up to 12 or less. And then the product of those relatively prime numbers will be possible orders for our elements. So let's go ahead and start. Well, let's start with two. Well, two is relatively prime to three, but we already have elements of order six taken care of by our first one to 12. Two is also relatively prime to five, which is also taken care of by our order, by our order of 10 there but two is prime to seven, which will give us a possible order of 14, which is like I said, equal to two times seven. What else is two relatively prime to? Well, two is relatively prime to nine. So two times nine is equal to 18. So we have a possible order of 18 from two times nine. Now two is also relatively prime to 11, but two plus 11 does not equal 12. So 22 will not be a possible order. So next let's go to three. Well, like I said, three times two is already included. And then we have three times four, which is also included in the order of 12. So we'll go to three times five. So we have an order of 15 that is possible there from three times five. Three is not relatively prime to six, but it is relatively prime to seven. And when we get three times seven, we get an order of 21 that is possible. 3 is relatively prime to 8, and 3 times 8 is equal to 24, so 24 is a possible order for us here. 3 is not relatively prime to 9, and we can't go any higher than that. So let's go ahead and move on to our next number, which is 4. So 4 is relatively prime to 5, so that gives us 20 as a possible order, as we will have 4 times 5. And that should be all that we get for 4, as 4 is not relatively prime to 6. It is relatively prime to 7, though which will give us a possible order of 28 as four times seven. And then let's see if we can think of any other possible orders. Well, let's see, six is relatively prime to five, so that will give us 30 as a possible order here. So we have six times five. And then lastly, we have seven is relatively, relatively prime to five as well. So we'll have seven times five as a possible order there. So I think this is all of the list, but if I missed one, make sure to leave it in the comments. And since this is our last problem, that is a good place to stop.